Here I've got one of these styles that I split out for the joint stool and I'll show you some of the steps I go through in planing this up. Uh, this one won't be terribly instructive because the wood is so perfect that it won't really require much um, effort to get it squared up. But I'll show you how I go through those steps. And <clears throat> the first thing is looking the stock over to see where I want to begin. And here I've got the uh, growth rings on the tree are parallel to the bench in this case, running this way. And in this direction are the medullary rays. Uh, so this is the growth ring plane, the tangential plane, and this one is the radial plane. And I'll start by planing that surface, the radial plane. And this particular stick has just the slightest sweep to it. When I throw a straight edge there, it's not hitting either end. And when I throw it here, it's high, it's low in the middle. Um, so what that results in is it might rock a little on my bench. This one is minor. Some of them will be more pronounced than that. So the first thing I'll do is flip it here. Just take a shave or two. Right off there. And that just helps it sit flatter. The reason I'm, I'm not working this side, at this end of the stick, it's fine. And at this end, it's, it's good also. It's big enough that it won't matter. But you can see that that side is a little bit uh, tapered from the way it's split. So that might get close to my two inch squares. So I want to work on this side first. Uh, so I know <coughs> that I need to hit the two ends. And much of this piece I can just do with this one plane. This is a 22 inch long plane with a two and a half inch wide freshly sharpened blade. And so all I'll do is just hit that end and step back and hit this end. And now I should be able to run uh, the whole length of the piece. So when I'm planing this work, there's it's a you know, rub your belly, pat your head kind of thing. Uh, I'm starting back here with the pressure ahead of the iron, ahead of the blade, pushing down with my left hand as I am now pushing forward with my right and really rocking into it from my feet. You see just in a few strokes I'm getting a whole swath of this stick. That's just how good this stock split. Um, it's a reasonably wide mouth. It's not a real tight mouth on that plane because I'm taking pretty thick shavings off of there. Uh, I'm a little high in the middle. I'm, I'm a little low off of that end. So I want to let up the pressure now near the end of that cut. That shaving might be a tad heavy. And to adjust it, I can just knock that button right there to bring that iron back a little. Yeah. And I think you'll be able to hear that difference. Now I'm going to sight down there to see if there's twist in that and there isn't. You can check that 
with wide sticks if you can get them. And I set these up for the camera, uh, but I can scooch down here and see as well that it has no twist to it. So what might happen is you'll look at the across those two sticks and one will be really haywire like that. And then you need to plane diagonally off those opposite corners. So, and in most cases I have to deal with that, it's particularly when I'm doing wider stuff. But here with these little two by twos and in such good stock, it's usually not something I get involved in. So that side is, is fine. Now I want to go, I usually go to the edge closer to the bark. So the sapwood and the bark were out here. Uh, just because that's usually the straightest part uh, on this piece, it, it'd probably be the same either way, but just my habit is to go here. And I can see that I have a, a bit of wood in the middle to take down. You can check this with a straight edge. I often will use a chalk line like that and snap that and it shows me that you know, here I'm pretty close to that chalk line and there, and this has a big chunk in the middle. Now, one thing about those two planes, the tangential plane, the growth ring plane, and the radial plane, the growth ring plane is a little tougher to work, and it's not insurmountable. Uh, I'm going to switch now to this little scrub plane. Uh, this plane was made by my friend Bill Anderson, and I did the carving on it. And uh, so I'll just use that to take the first few bits down. This wood is frozen as well as being green, and um, that doesn't make it easier. So I'm gonna just hit a few spots like that, and you can see why you call that a scrub plane. I'm not planing the same way I was with that longer plane, not taking those long shavings. This really going pretty localized like that. And now I've removed right near that chalk line. But what I haven't looked at is, is it square? And it's close to what I need. So now I'll switch back to this longer plane. And the bigger movements From this angle, you see the planing motion, the rocking on the feet. So at the beginning of the stroke, my pressure is on my back foot and my front hand. And then as I progress through the stroke, I lean on my left foot and the pressure reverts to my right hand. still have to get below here is a blow from my hatchet. I still have to get below that, but at this stage I want to see have I put a tilt in it, and I have. So my square is hitting over here and not right up near the handle of the square. So I got to lean on that outer edge 
out here a little bit. So I've moved over to try to take that down. Oh, it's still out of whack. Sometimes, yeah. So what's happening is up here, it's pretty good. As I get closer to me, I didn't hit this end. And that's not unusual. So I'll just make a couple short passes right there. That. Now, another thing to check is that straight edge. And you see it dips off up here, runs off the stick. So I need to concentrate my effort back here, take a couple swaths like that, and then it should be pretty close to what I need. didn't hit it. So sometimes to get something so localized I'll switch to a shorter plane. I have this little smooth plane here. That. It's getting a lot closer. Yeah. Oops. And this is wider than I need right now. So I have some leeway there. And after a while, I stop checking. I have still, it's low up here. So I can turn it around. On that and the reason I can get away with that is just the fibers run so straight in this stock that often I can plane it coming and going. But now I am satisfied with the square. It's not perfect, but it's real good. And it's pretty flat. The length is 24 inches. I need about 22. So I'll be chopping some off each end in the final result. So at this stage I'll mark out the, the width and the thickness and then trim them and plane them. I'll show you that. So <coughs> You want to, um, to get those shavings off your bench. They are just dripping, sopping wet. And they'll make your bench wet in the end if you leave them in place. Um, so now this piece, I wanted to finish at two inches square. But as I said, it's, it's so freshly um, split. It, it's just full of moisture and will shrink as it dries. It'll shrink more across these growth rings than it will, ah, here we are, it'll shrink more across those growth rings than it will perpendicular to them. Um, and you could get ultra fussy and make this dimension greater than that dimension. I don't get too insane about it. So I've set the marking gauge for almost two and an eight inches. And I'll just run that gauge off of those two planes I just made.
And so from that stage, you can use an axe, you can use a scrub plane, uh, you should use something that will take a bigger chip, like the axe of the scrub plane, rather than going right to your finishing plane, you'll just be there longer. Um, you can highlight that with the chalk line or with a pencil if you need to see it better. I'll try to do it so it'll show up on the camera. Do it with the chalk line. And just as before, one of these planes will reduce a lot with a lot less effort than the other. Um, so here's the radial plane, and you can take that down, might as well do that first, it'll be the easiest. You can take that down with the um, scrub plane, and here I tried to make those full length shavings. See, that wasn't a lot of work to get that down. Now I just want to clean that up and check it with the square. this side <coughs> I'd be inclined to do that with the axe at first uh, but maybe you can hear it's just a perfectly miserable day out here today and I'll go to the script plane <laughs> I have a block in the shop but it's behind that camera and uh, it's not worth disrupting everything to chop off just a little bit of wood. It's a little wavy. So, let's see where that's at. So you see those first couple passes now with the jointer plane. I'm just hitting a few spots, but each successive pass will take a longer shaving. And now one thing I didn't talk about, and as I'm just about done, I should hit it now. Um, the plane is not running perfectly parallel to the uh, stock. I skew it a little like that. Not as important on this narrow stock, but on wider stock it is. But <coughs> it does a few things. It slices with your iron, which makes it easier to shave through the wood. Uh, sort of the iron then has a leading edge to it. But also it puts you more in contact uh, across a broader expanse when you're dealing, say, with your four inch wide stuff or the, the 
10 inch wide piece for the lid to the joint stool of the seat. Uh, that, by skewing it, puts the plane in more contact with the breadth of the piece of wood. So I always try to skew it, even when you don't really need it. And it's a little hard to see that now, so I'll double check it with the marking gauge. I got a little narrow, but on that dimension, there's less shrinkage here than there, so not as critical. So at this stage, I'm done, except for one thing. I want to, these are my, where am I? <laughs> uh, this and that are my two outside surfaces. So to identify those, I can make a mark on them with a pencil. But what I like to do instead is shave off that inner corner with the scrub plane. I mean, really shave it off. So now that you can see that corner shaved off. Now I know when I pick this piece up, I don't even have to look at it, I can feel it. That's the inside corner. So this piece has its joints here and here. And that just helps me immediately orient this piece without having to get out my square, without having to check it, without looking for pencil marks on it. Uh, and I found that by studying old pieces joint stools and tables that I saw would sometimes have that inner corner taken off and it would when it was removed like that it was on all four legs I never saw a piece where some legs had the corner gone and some didn't there were pieces where the, the all the legs had all their corners but there were others where this corner is removed on all the legs so I tried to reason, why would they take that corner off? This is the only reason I could come up with. It's an orientation in. And uh, I don't know that I'm right, but I find it very handy for that. So that's the planing. And then all I do at that point is put the date on here. And it is now February. Two one two one, and uh, and then tuck them in the shop here, away from the stove, where they will dry slowly. If they dry too fast, they can crack, and I may very well glue the ends of that to slow down that drying. But that's how to plane the styles. One thing I didn't talk about that I uh, will address now is the reaction between the iron in the steel and the tannic acid and the moisture in the oak. And from it you get this fabulous residue here uh, built up on your plain irons that if left there will um, begin to tarnish them and even lead to rust if you just let it sit there. Uh, so this was just from planing one piece of wood. So that one two by two uh, style, two feet long, planed it for, I don't know, 15 minutes and uh, did this to these planes. Let me show you how I then deal with that. I'll do this longer one first. So to take the iron out of that plane, I hold it over the bench and uh, not this way with when I loosen it, the iron can fall through onto the bench. I tip it sideways and strike it on this button here called the strike block, like that. And that loosens the iron and you can pull out, you loosens the wedge and you can pull out the iron. So the <coughs> plain body, you can wipe it dry. I just recently put some tallow on the bottom of this. You put wax on it. So that should be mostly okay for right now. 
but it's the uh, iron, which this iron had just been sharpened just prior to planing this piece. Um, so what I can do, and I've got a piece of scrap wood, this is a piece of quarter inch plywood that I use for making a hideous mess. Um, Uh, I'll go ahead and take it apart, take the cap iron off of it. Sometimes you'll see uh, the staining here on the back of the iron as well. And I just shoot it with some WD-40 and use a brass, a brass bristle brush, say that, and just clean that off and do it on the outside too, stroke, striking, uh, stroking the brush off the iron like that, not running your fingers into the business. And that should be all that it needs. It doesn't need a sharpening right now because I just sharpened it. And you can do uh, this as well. And then just mop up after that. If you have a paper towel. So, it's important to tackle that because it will make a hideous mess of your irons if you let it. And then you just put them back together and put them back in the plane. That's set too far back. I don't have that uh, cap iron right at chip breaker right up against the edge. Mine's about like that. And this is a single iron plane. These shorter ones you hit in the back right there. You can see that wedge comes loose. And uh, yeah, look at how that one has all that stuff just turning black right away. So, just a tiny shot of that. You can use metal bodied planes on this green wood. You don't have to have these wooden bodied planes. But then you've got to do this to the whole plane, the body as well, uh, in addition to the iron and uh, chip breaker if it's got one. Uh, and it may, the metal body planes may stain your piece of wood, but it's superficial. It'll come off uh, when you plane it, when it dries out a bit. So that's how I maintain those planes. So here I've got one of these aprons that I split out and it's grossly big. It's four and a quarter inches at the narrow end, four and a half at the wide end. Much too thick, two inches thick almost, inch and three quarters. Uh, but it's twisted. So it'll give me a chance to show you how to address that. And uh, you can see by that picture with the winding sticks that this corner is high in relation to this uh, section right here. So when I eyeball it from my end, that corner is where I need to go. And you can tackle this lots of ways. You can use an ax, you can even split some of it off. But I'll show you how to deal with it, with the planes, just because uh, that's, that's where we're at is here at the bench planing stock. So I can use this um, scrub plane and just set it nice and heavy. Like that. And um, start right on that corner. Now I've got a big bump here. This is nowhere near flat. 
And now I want to take the shaving off the length of it. I'll back that iron up a bit, knocking here, and that draws it back. So I want a lighter shaving now. Not that light. <laughs> and skewing that plane as well. Uh, that's a lot better. And it's probably even close to flat. It is. So it didn't take very much to do that. But when you look at the thickness of those shavings that are coming off of there, you can see how you get a lot of uh, a lot of response in a hurry from that process. Now I had cleaned these irons a minute ago, so I got. What I do is put my fingers underneath there, cross that mouth, tap that wedge. As I knock that iron down, I can feel it on my fingertips. And I'd rather sneak up on it. Which I'm not doing. Yeah, that's set too heavy. What's going on there? cap iron got too far forward so that's impeding a bit of the uh, planing. Which is kind of what it felt like. So I just must have had that a little bit loose. Tighten it back up. Finish it off now. So you can see maybe that skew where the, the plane is at an angle to that stock. And I'm just pushing down on my on the forward end and sliding through that cut. Edge. And I'll look for that wind by eye, and I'll put the winding sticks on there. Now, then I got to get way down here, and it's a little bit overcorrected. Not enough to throw things off, but a stroke or two there on that corner. And that's 
should be good enough. So from here, I go just like on the styles, only now it won't stand up on that narrow edge. And if you've got a vise, you can chuck it in a vise. I just put it, one corner of it in this uh, screw, like that, and jam that against there. And then check that with a square, like so, and a straight edge. And then the rest of it is just like on the other piece. You work out your thickness it's going to be, and remove the excess thickness, and trim the width. But uh, that's really how you deal with the, the bulk of it.